Hello everyone, iPhone SE first generation oldest hardware supported on iOS 14.5 beta 3. How well does it perform? What's battery life like? Well, let's take a look. Want short but detailed iOS full reviews that cover the devices you care about? Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you always know if it's safe to update or not. Now, similar to last time, general performance remains mostly unchanged. Overall, performance since updating to beta 3 of iOS 14.5 is ever so slightly faster than that of beta 2s. Now, apps launch at nearly the same time, games run just as well, web pages load up just as fast, etc, etc. You shouldn't expect much change in overall performance from here on out since the iPhone SE is nearing the end of its lifetime. Now, when it comes to RAM management, it is also mostly the same. On iOS 14.5 Beta 3, reloads are more frequent, mainly when you have several apps open simultaneously, and reloads become very frequent when heavier apps are open in the background as well, but this is only natural. So animations have gotten slightly better with this release, iOS 14.5 Beta 3 has fixed the app library stuttering for me, while the widgets page stuttering remains. The rest of the system animations are very smooth, so there's not much to talk about there. Now before I get into battery life, keep in mind that my iPhone SE has a maximum capacity of 87% and has had plenty of restarts. Okay, well it was more like two, but who's counting? However, I have disabled throttling in settings, meaning that the iPhone is not being performance throttled. And the battery life has been much improved since iOS 14.2, iOS 14.3. However, I'm seeing slightly better battery life on iOS 14.5 Beta 3 than that of iOS 14.4. There is still that notorious iPhone SC battery drain, but it's not as bad. No matter how you use your iPhone, I'd recommend keeping a spare charger with you as you'll likely need to charge the iPhone throughout the day. Now, standby time is actually pretty good with a drain of about 7% per night. Now, keep in mind that your battery performance can and will most likely vary from mine. Now, as for overheating, it's the exact same thing as before. I haven't really noticed anything dramatic. So far, we're just looking at slight overheating when performing very light tasks. Naturally, that overheating does get more severe as the task gets progressively heavier. Well, while we really only see minor improvements in certain areas, there seems to be nothing really getting worse, which is what we like to see. However, we still come back to our main question of should you update. If you're on an early release of iOS 14 and you are okay with installing beta firmware, I'd say go for it. If you're on iOS 13, don't need to update and don't experience battery generator overheating, I'd recommend just staying there for now. And if you're on iOS 12 or earlier, I'd recommend staying there unless you absolutely need to update. Alright everyone, that is all I have for this video, and if you do have any questions or you just like to say hi, make sure to leave a comment down below. Of course, you can make sure to follow me on Twitter using the link in the description. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.